What's going on guys, Teddy Baldessar from teddybaldessar.com. If you're new to this channel, this is where we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldessar.com as a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. And today we're gonna be looking at a more retro 70s style chronograph from Bulova with their Chronograph A. Now this is a limited edition piece. They have automatic versions as well as some quartz options versions. So we'll go through the details of this uh, in this video as well at the end going over kind of some things to consider if you are looking to purchase this piece and all relevant links will be in the description down below for more information as well as where to purchase. But guys, let's take a closer look at this watch. So first looking at a rundown of the specs, we have a case size of 38.5 millimeters, thickness of 16.7 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, lug to lug of 47 millimeters, water resistance of 200 meters, movement is an automatic Solita SW510, crystal is dome sapphire with anti-reflective coating, crown is screwed down, and we have a price of $2,950, but we actually have this one for $2,065 this week for the holiday season, and this one is limited to just 350 pieces as well. Now, Bulova is a brand with some pretty interesting history, and when looking at this surfboard chronograph here, this is certainly a place where we can draw back a lot of inspiration from pieces from the 1970s with Bulova. With the brand releasing many diver style chronographs that had this more cushion case style as well as coming in more eye-catching types of color profiles with use of orange as well as this distinctive blue oval surfboard encircling the two sub dials that we have here paying tribute to those previous pieces. Now these models from the 1970s were nicknamed the surfboard with their distinctive blue oval shape encircling the two sub dials on the watch itself. Now there is the automatic version that we have here today that is going to be limited edition and we also have some different quartz options as well that were released alongside this one at a more affordable price tier. But with this watch with its presentation with the box that it comes with which typically I don't really talk about but this one is quite exceptional. There's certainly a lot of time and thought put into that. It really serves as almost a time capsule for this unique 1970s style design. Now pretty much everything about this watch is very different than the norm. First with the wear, and this is certainly going to be a point that is also true in that instance of being very different. Now 38.5 millimeters wearing very similar to the classic case formats of 1970s chronographs. But you are getting a few additional things. Lug to lug distance is quite compact as well. And then you're also getting a 20 millimeter lug width to pair a variety of different straps with this piece. The one area where there is the big separation from more of the classic uh, models that are out there is the thickness. The thickness is coming in at 16.7 millimeters. So this is a thick watch. You don't feel that all in the actuals because where the movement is sitting within the case, you can actually see it from the side, how it's very far down pressed within the case. And that is going to really disappear when it's on the wrist as that's going to press into the top of your wrist. So this is going to wear a little bit closer to say a 14 and a half to 15 millimeter thick watch uh, as well as when you factor in the dome sapphire crystal but but don't take that the wrong way this is a thick watch on the wrist and that really is the byproduct of the automatic caliber within compared to more of the manual calibers that were being used in days prior the crown and the pushers along the right side do not extend out too far it's pretty much in line with i would say an average chronograph that are out there on the market the pushers operate in typical fashion the two o'clock pusher is going to stop and start your chronograph function and then the four is going to be a reset I I did notice how very tactile the feel in terms of engaging these pushers were. You really get a nice solid feedback when engaging with them and it makes really solid setting and resetting of the chronograph movement. So it points there certainly with this overall architecture with the pushers and the movement within. Given the water resistance of this piece, we do have a screw down crown, which is only going to provide even further security to this depth rating on this piece. The pushers are not screw down, so that is something to consider here and just kind of be cognizant of as you're maybe engaging with this piece and wearing it on a day-to-day -day basis. The case does come in a more brush finish on the anterior side as well as on the bracelet. And then along the side of the case, we're going to see some high polish. The bracelet comes at a one-link style with a brush finish across the links. It is going to meet at a two-button release at the underside, opening up at a butterfly clasp. It is secure when locking and unlocking. It is a pin and collar adjustable bracelet, so that could be a knock here, but you are getting a few half lengths to size this one appropriately. One other point is when the bracelet meets the case, that end link does protrude out a bit more, so it might add a bit of wear and just size to the lug-to-lug -lug distance, just given the fact that it is a little bit more blocky in its texture and will not pivot down directly 
directly and slope around the wrist, maybe to someone's liking. I personally would try to pair a few a variety of different straps here. If you are somebody that wants to make this wear a little bit more compact, I think you're going to get a bit of a tighter feel on the wrist as well as lessening the heftiness of this piece on the wrist. So if you are of that variety wanting to pull this one off, I would probably advise maybe looking at some additional strap options here. But the overall bracelet design, I think pairs very well. It looks great and it's just simple and I think just works holistically with the design. This watch also features a bi-directional bezel. It doesn't have any audible click. It's not as much a tactile friction fit type of bezel design. So it is going to more just glide in your actual activation of it. It does feature a large Superluminova plot at the 12 o'clock which is going to shine with nice incandescence compared to the other loom on the dial, which we'll get into a little bit more in a moment. Also, this is a countdown bezel, which is very nice and useful. Personally, I actually like using a bezel to time events rather than a chronograph. I actually think it's a little bit easier to read, in my opinion. So that's also a nice added benefit here. So you can also time additional events along with that chronograph. But now looking at the dial surface. So probably the most notable feature of this watch is that oval horizontal surfboard style aesthetic that is housing both of the sub registers for the chronograph. The nine o'clock register is going to be your running 60 seconds. And then at the three o'clock register, we have our 30 minute timer. The outside dial surface, the predominant dial surface is going to come in silver and works really well with that blue. Along the outside, we do have a tachometer scale. Set right within that, we do have a minute track with applied markers denoting each of the hours. They have polished off sides and then Superluminova set within to match the handset at the center. Now the handset here in combination with that blue oval surfboard style design at the center, I think are the two things that combine to make this watch what it is, you know, very unique. The orange dip triangular second hand reminds me of Omega Chronostops. It was very much in line with what was popular during this era. For the hour and the minute hand, you're getting a blunted handset with white leading all the way up to the end point where the tips are going to be orange and will also contain Superluminova. When turning off the lights, the loom on the dial is not shining again as bright as the loom pip on the bezel itself. But it is serviceable. This is, I think, one area in terms of where this watch is falling behind compared to the competition, for example, but does its job if you are looking on the fly in a dark situation and trying to tell the time. Now, flipping this watch over, we have a closed screwed in case back housing the SW510 caliber within. The case back does have some small nods here, have the bull of a logo, as well as the mention of the limited edition. Now this SW510 automatic chronograph movement being provided by Salida, uh, one of the more prominent and well-known Swiss manufacturers for movements outside of ETA. Their movements are usually very reliable, some of the best in the class, and also are a great way to get into the world of mechanical chronographs, Swiss-made mechanical chronographs at a solid price. This one is going to be operating at 28,800 vibrations per hour or 4 hertz, 48-hour power reserve on this one. This one is also going to feature hacking and hand winding. So hacking is stopping the second hand when pulling out the crown to the farthest position. The engagement of the pushers on this is very good compared to a lot of the Valju uh, calibers and other Salita calibers that I have engaged in the past. So big ups here for Bulova. And then also the rotor jiggle because of the case construction is a little bit less noticeable. If you have ever handled a Valju 7750 or 53, as well as other just automatic chronograph uh, calibers, the rotor jiggle in the movement, you can feel it when it's on the wrist. Not saying that this is not prevalent here, but it is much more subdued compared to, I think, the competition here. Also, when looking at the accuracy of this piece, this one's running quite quite accurately at about four seconds fast a day. So pretty solid, definitely more of a party in the front, all the business in the back, but that's really, I think, what you're looking for when going for a chronograph movement, especially at this price range. You want reliability, you want something that's time tested. All right, so now to unpack for this piece. I think from a wearability standpoint, this is kind of an oddball in a lot of ways. 38.5 millimeters with the case design, pretty compact lug to lug distance, but you also are getting a pretty thick watch here at 16.7 millimeters in thickness. Again, you're not gonna feel that all in the actual wear because it is going to press into the wrist. It's still a thick watch, no question. So that's something to consider here. Also with the price, with this discounted price that we have it at right now, I think this is actually in a totally different world than where it was at the retail price. I think you're starting to get into a very pricey range at around 3,000 bucks, but around $2,000, this is starting to become way more cost effective for people out there. And this is a very distinctive and different type of chronograph. It's paying tribute to classic Bulova models, and I can't really recall many options in this range 
that are going to be appropriate. I think you can go up market a little bit and look at a Breitling top time, but you're also looking at multiples of the price now. And when dealing with the service and costs, they're going to be much higher than going for maybe more traditional Salida based movement that we have in here. The presentation on this piece is quite nice, but this is kind of one of those love it or hate it type of time pieces. You have to really like this very, I would say, polarizing type of design format that would come from 1970s chronographs. And if you do have a desire to own one of those pieces, but don't like sometimes the serviceability or the uncertainty that comes with buying a vintage timepiece, then this is a great one to take a look at, and especially now with this discounted price now present. All right, guys, if you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. That all really does help out the channel, so we'd appreciate that. In addition, if you're wanting to learn more about this piece, we'll have information in the description down below. TeddyBallStar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, so definitely check out the selection, full factory warranty for all of the watches that we have for sale. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.